Okay, welcome, welcome to the 19T swap. Um, it's like 9 degrees right now here in Pittsburgh, so I turned the heat off for just a minute. Um, most of this video, I'm going to have to have the heat on, so you're not going to be able to hear me real good. But um, we're going to start getting into the removal of the turbo and stuff. Um, I'll come down here and give you some details about what I did so far, but I'm just about getting ready to pop this thing out of here. So a little sneak preview, and uh, then I'll give you the rundown on how to get it out, and we'll do the rest of the rebuild and be on our way. Okay, I got all the banjo bolts for oil and coolant off of the center housing there. And I went ahead underneath the vehicle and there's two Allen keys on the oil drain. And I just pulled that whole oil drain out of the block. <clears throat> there's a rubber seal that holds it in there. You're going to want to get a new one. And there's also a gasket that goes on there. It's going to come with your turbo rebuild kit. But either way, I've got the clamshell clamp off of here. There was a clamp around there. This is all loose. My intake pipe and everything's off. And I uh, sprayed this down with some WD-40. This is pretty good and seized on here. So um, be really careful when you pull this out of the exhaust turbine. Because if you bend these fins on here, you pretty much have to get a new shaft. So I screwed this up at the junkyard before. And I bent the fins on one of these exhaust turbines. So I'm going to try to... I'm going to have to use two hands and... Pull this out of here real gently. All right, I got the 15G removed here. Um, I'm gonna take a little intermission right now, but uh, when I come back, I'm gonna take this snap ring off there and take the CHRA out of the compressor housing and clean all this stuff up really good and get all these ports cleaned out. Pretty much this half of the turbo, I'm gonna be more or less throwing away. I don't need it. I'm gonna use the reuse the wastegate uh, even though this nipples all rusty and beat up on here I might just go to the scrapyard and pull another wastegate if I can but um, I'm gonna need this and clean it up and make sure I preserve these splines on here don't bend any of those and we're gonna need that shaft and then everything else I'm gonna have rebuild parts for so check back in here in a minute check out the 15g label Fifteen can almost see it. Fifteen G. Or exclusive. Okay. So we're gonna start with your center housing. Once it's all cleaned out and you have everything out of it, you wanna make sure and get in the ports and actually what I did was soaked it in a little tub like this, full of that degreaser. I soaked it overnight and that worked pretty good. But um there's oil holes and oil ports and stuff in here that you want to make sure are nice and clean. Uh, hopefully I'm getting a good angle on this. But There's oil port there and some stuff in here that you want to make sure is all free of debris. So you're going to start with your clean center housing. First thing you're going to do is assemble this, this thrust surface here. Um, this is be kind of hard to show you because it's already put together but there's three pieces to it you have a thrust collar oh there's four pieces there's a piston ring that's going to come inside your rebuild kit that's this little ring here right here and you're going to snap him right over top of this thing with a little bit of WD-40 and spray it on there and snap that in there once it's through this deflector plate and then you're going to snap it into your seal plate here so this is already pre-assembled it's got oil and stuff on it these are all brand new pieces so you'll assemble this first thrust surface here and then you are going to get your first journal bearing and you're going to want to have a bottle of assembly lube I was able to find this at the auto parts store I already have everything greased up here so I'm not going to do it again but <clears throat> drop your journal bearing down in there nice and even and then you're going to have your thrust collar or thrust washer whatever you want to call this guy and he goes in there like that not like that 
because it will drop down into the journal bearing and it seems like it fits but it won't let your shaft go in all the way so you want to make sure it's with the nub up so you just kind of set him on there like that and then you're going to take your brass thrust surface here and it can only go on one way with the little oil port facing the oil hole like this drop them over the top of there so that he lines up with that drift pin and he's in there and then they're going to give you a brand new o-ring with your kit and you're going to want to shoot that with some WD-40 and there's a channel for it to sit down inside here I'll push in there Okay, our o-ring in there. And then you're gonna drop your thrust surface over there. And make sure your oil deflector plate is down inside of there with the correct alignment. Like that. Let me do this again in case I had a bad angle. I feel like maybe I didn't have that lined up so good. One more time, real quick, in case I'm a terrible cameraman. So, we have journal bearing. Come in. First thing goes in is the journal bearing. It's in there. He drops right in there. Boom. Journal bearing. Then you put your thrust collar nub up, like that. Brass the surface with the channel in like that over the drift pin and line him up a little bit okay and then o-ring I'm working with the GoPro camera here and they don't have a viewfinder and I do not have the app open on my phone which does have a viewfinder now it's going down in there like a smiley face come on It's like trying to grab a wet noodle in here. Okay, O rings in. This stuff's all nice and happy. Oil deflector lined up with the oil drain down in there. Make sure he's in. Now you want to press down evenly on this till it seats. I hope. Okay. Seat it in there. And your snap ring goes on. Fortunately, unfortunately, I do not have the right snap ring pliers. So I'm going to be using a pair of modified needle nose that I sharpened with a file. Snap him in there. These C clips or these lock rings have a beveled surface to them and you want to make sure that the beveled surface is up and not down. So that's the front side done. Then you're going to flip it over. And you're going to take your turbo shaft here. Shoot in with a little bit of WD-40 again. And you're going to take your piston ring. I have two of them here. One of them's ruined. There's another one that's I'm reusing out of my existing turbo because that one's ruined. And he goes on the second notch. Like this.
Okay. Like that. And you take your journal bearing and oil him up. Even though he's already greased, we're gonna grease him again. Grease him again there. I'm gonna slide that journal bearing onto the shaft. Take one final look down inside your housing for any kind of dirt or anything. You're going to insert this down in here. All the way through to the front. And, oh, I almost forgot my exhaust shield there. There's an exhaust back plate that you need to have on there. This sits on there. And make sure you clean that also with your degreaser. So you get everything on here. And drop that down, and it should snap down flush. Then you can take your compressor wheel on this side, and it may need a little bit of heat with the heat gun. Before you put the compressor wheel on, you want to wipe this shit off and spray it with some brake clean because we're going to need to apply red Loctite on those threads and we don't want to have any grease. Okay so when you install your compressor wheel there's going to be a flat spot on the shaft of the exhaust side here and you want to line that flat spot up with the red dot that should be painted or whatever color dot that should be painted on your wheel. And this may require a heat gun. Yeah, it looks like we're going to need to use the heat gun on it. Let me get that out. I'm kind of nervous trying to do that with the heat gun and record at the same time, but we have our flat spot and we have our red dot right there. And basically, you're just gonna eyeball line them up, and that's it. The nut goes on. Um, we are gonna do this with an inch-pound torque wrench, and I will list the torque in the details of the video. But uh, it's gonna be a left-hand thread. You're gonna do a little dab of red Loctite on there, and wind that down. Make sure there's no grease on your threads, and then you'll be ready to install the turbo back into the exhaust housing.